What's up, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the Food Community Podcast. I am Rich Homie Juan. I got LA Icon with me as <laughs> usual. Today we got a real special guest in the building, living legend, Fluffy. Everybody clap, everybody clap. <laughs> Shit. We Thank have a live studio audience today. Yes, yes. A lot of freaking human beings in here. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Highly appreciate it. When was the last time you were in trouble, Gabriel? When was the last time? Uh, define trouble. Uh, define trouble with that. With the as, law. With the law. <sighs> we're going somewhere with this. Don't worry. God, it's... Well, I've never been arrested, but I mean, I've, I've been pulled over for, for speeding or for uh, running a light or something. It's, and, been a, it's been a while. In the event of you ever getting in trouble, I'm going to give you a phone number to my pal. Nicholas Rosenberg. Shout out to our sponsor. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, I fell for that one. <laughs> nice. I never get in trouble, but when I do. <laughs> What's his name? Nicholas Rosenberg. I'll, I'll do you that one solid. I don't get in trouble, but when I do, I call. First of all, you guys got to change the battery in that smoke detector. <laughs> For I know real. you don't hear it no more. <laughs> we just Nicholas, Nicholas Rosenberg. I don't know where you're at, dude. Hopefully, I never have to call you. But if I have to call you, pick up that phone. Honestly, you're better off texting him first. Oh, he's one of those. Yes. Okay. <laughs> hey, speaking of getting pulled over, um, do you ever use your uh, celebrity privilege to get away with tickets? I've attempted to do that in the past. Like it, when it happens, it happens organically, where the cop will be like, "Oh, oh hey," but the one time I tried to do it. The one time I literally like was like, OK, because I, 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 uh, I got pulled over and I had my son and his friends in the car. And when I saw the cop get out, it was, you know, the cop seemed like he was between, I don't know, 25 and 30. And I, I saw the face and I'm like, ah, oh, we're good. He'll recognize me. And he mm -hmm. came to the, the window and I'm just I turned it on. I'm like, hey. <laughs> and the guy's like license of registration. I'm like, uh, OK. And I still kept trying to mug like it's me. And the guy had no idea who I was. And I, I just wound up looking stupid in front of my son and friends. And they're like, ah, you thought you were somebody. And I'm like, clearly I'm not. <laughs> so when you try to look cool, that's, you know, when you wind up looking stupid. But the times that I got pulled over were I was just like, you know, yeah, I ran the light. I'm sorry. I messed up. Fluffy. And I'm like, OK. And then, you know, they let me go. Are you on social media? Your social media presence is heavy, right? Uh, yes, I'm very uh, I'm all over IG, a little bit on Twitter or X, whatever it's called. How now. about TikTok? Very much so. Um, I have I, no TikTok presence, by the way. I, I didn't want to get into it because I saw TikTok like a um, like a Snapchat. I thought it was too young for me. Like I, I felt weird being on it. Like I never got into Snapchat because I always felt like ah, it's not. It's, it, were no, you I'm in over, a, I'm over forty? I were you in a relationship when you had Snapchat? Uh, I never had Snapchat. Well, if you had Snapchat and you were in a relationship, that's why it was boring for you, sir. Oh, because you're trying to hide stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, no, no, no. I never, I've never sent any photos. By the way, no one has that picture because I've, I've never done it. I, I, yeah, no one has that He's picture. Lying, and if they sure. do, they, yeah, they made it up, man. What if they took that picture while you were asleep? Ah, I've never fallen asleep around anybody. I don't trust anybody to be that comfortable around unless I was in a relationship. Ex-girlfriends can say that. Once again, if you get in trouble, call Nicholas. Facts. Because uh, Nicholas will get you out of that gym right there. <laughs> Snapchat photo got you in trouble? Yeah. That's revenge stuff now. I think that's a big-time crime. Revenge porn? Yeah. Yes. That's mm -hmm. crazy. But no, so anyway, to answer your question, yes, I'm on TikTok. Uh, I got into it because it's stupid. It's so much fun. I don't promote anything on it. I try, and I get zero clicks, but I do a video where I'm making a Chewbacca face and a million views. Viral. I don't get it. It's crazy. Let's take you all the way back to the beginning for people that are not familiar. Where did you grow up, my friend? Uh, well, I was born in Chula Vista, California, basically San Diego area. Yes. And I grew up in Long Beach, in the LBC. And uh, uh, I graduated from high school, Wilson High School, class of 1994, and I still live in Long Beach. That's amazing. Yeah. How did you like growing up there? I guess as a kid, it was... It was okay, but when I think back on it, I'm like, you know, it could have been better. It was rough. It could have been in better. In retrospect. I, yeah, I was always a chubby kid. I was always, you know, I had messed up teeth. I had acne. I had a shiny forehead. I was a ceboso. You know, <laughs> uh, I wasn't popular. I wasn't the last one picked in sports. I was I was never picked in sports. Mm. and I'm still waiting to get picked <laughs> for sports. But then, you know, I got into high school and I joined the speech team, and that's where all of this got started. Boom, boom, boom. Mm. So did you go to school with Snoop by any chance? Snoop Dogg went to uh, school at Poly. Poly. Yeah, he went to Poly. I went to Wilson. And Snoop is a little bit older than I am. I'm 47, and I want to say he's like uh, 50, 
what, 53 maybe? Really? Oh, so he wouldn't have, you would have still been in junior high. Yes. But you have intersected in life. Yes, but never in, never in Long Beach. And it's funny because uh, we, you know, when we talked about where we lived and grew up, we were literally blocks away from one another. Oh, so you grew up in the hood? Yeah. On where and what? Oh, all over the place. My mom and I, we moved like every two years we would move. Uh, I don't I don't know what the story was, but we were always moving. So we lived on the uh, border between east and west on the uh, city of Long Beach. So on uh, 15th and Magnolia, we lived on uh, on Olive, on Redondo, on PCH, mm. on Atlantic. Ooh, there's a few more in there. Uh, but yeah, most of the time was spent right off of uh, a Magnolia on a street called Henderson. Really small street. I'm familiar with Magnolia. I'm not too familiar. There's a Tacos El Gordo right there. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Fire. Yeah. A tacos al gordo? No, not tacos al gordo. A uh, freaking tacos loco. Uh, yeah, wait, wait. Yeah, tacos, tacos loco? <coughs> you don't mean king taco, do you? No, I don't mean king taco. It's, uh, do you like king taco? King taco, yes, because they have Be cheese. Be careful. It's, ta- it's king taco, yes. Uh, tacos Mexico, no, because they don't use cheese. Okay. I love cheese and tacos Mexico. <coughs> queso. So then tacos al don't hit the spot right now. Yes, that's like a quesadilla. I had sex with a, 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 a el pastor taco right there. And it's like three tacos in one taco. That's a tacos estilo don, right? Fire, yeah. Tacos estilo don. Te avientas, güey. Super amazing. Super good. Hey, growing up in uh, Long Beach, did you see anything crazy there? The or like cra- grow through something traumatic growing up there? Uh, You know what, man? Growing up right there, there was always a lot of uh, fights because it was the border. You know, you had the, the East Side Longos, West Side Longos, and they would all meet to fight right there on the on the border, which was Magnolia Henderson. So there was always shootings and, mm. you know, there was a lot of fights. The craziest thing I saw was <coughs> somebody on the hood of a car. <laughs> yeah, but well, the car was moving. Yes, that's right. And wild. then the car wasn't moving, and then the guy was still moving. And that was like, oh, my God. That's, that, that's something you only see in movies. So to see that in your own neighborhood and then find out that the guy didn't make it, yeah, that, that was like, wow. That's okay. crazy. Mm. But at the time, that seemed normal to you, right? Or at, no? at the time, well, there was always something going on. Like, my mom and I would have drills at the house, <laughs> anytime you hear the balazos, you hear the shots, the, the drill was, anytime, pow, 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 hit the floor. Hit the floor, get under the bed. Mom that, was, that was the drill. You hear balazos, Mom hit knew. the floor, get on the bed. <clears throat> but that was a regular thing, and it happened so often that it was just like, okay, you know, pow, 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 oh, get to get, get the floor. Mm. You know, so it was almost like a game. My mom made it seem like, it's a game, Miko, vamos. Pow, 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 okay. Pow, pow. That's very nice. Makes it less traumatizing. It, it, yeah. I mean, so I remember that. And in hindsight, I'm like, man, we should have moved sooner. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was a regular thing. At what point did you realize that you were funny? Uh, when I got a check. When I got paid. <laughs> when, when someone said, well, you do that again for money. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so would you say you were the class clown towards the end of school or anything like that? Not at all. I was never the class clown. I was very quiet. Uh, when I'm not on stage, I'm not the loudest person in the room. I'm not even the most talkative. <laughs> uh, if anything, I think I'm a very good listener, uh, and I think that's what helps me when I do get up on stage. Uh, when I was in class, I joined the speech team, <laughs> and every day the teacher would encourage the students to get up in front of the class and share and talk about anything or everything. And I would do it every day because I hated writing. Perfect. And so I got enough points just by talking. So I passed the class. We're just talking and not not ever having to write. That's pretty amazing. So so then coming out of high school, what did you do? Did you go to college? Did you get a job? I tried college, bro. I did. <clears throat> I tried it. Uh, I had applied for a um, God, well, the student loan back then. I forget the, uh, the program. Uh, I went to Long Beach City College for a semester, and that's as long as I lasted. I couldn't take What did you think you were going to major in? I wasn't sure because I knew I wanted to do comedy, so I was trying to find things that would help me with that. So, of course, I, I took a drama class, a speech class, things that would allow me to get up in front of people. And it just, I didn't like it. It made no sense to me. So I took the money that they gave me for school, and I wound up buying a car stereo. Mm-hmm. It was a badass stereo. It was a Pioneer. It was a pullout back a then. A pullout? Or not the pullout. It was a t- detachable face. We were, we were in the new, the new era. <clears throat> it was already that phase. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. But no, man, school was, uh, I, I wish that school would have, I, I would have been more into it just for the sake of, of learning certain things and, and being more in touch. But yeah, comedy was, was, you know, was calling and uh, I didn't see school as this, the thing that was going to teach me how to be a better comedian. Where was the first place that you got on the stage? Uh, and called myself a comic. That would be the Golden Sales in Long Beach. <laughs> they, it's also called the PCH Club. I think it was also uh, a best, not a be- yeah, it was a best Western hotel <laughs> at the time. So the, the room itself had a bunch of different names. 
And I think now it's, it's, it's a different, it's, the hotel is now called the Golden Sales. Did you bomb? No, I had one of the greatest performances of my life the first time. That's the second hard. time I performed, I ate, I ate the big chilote. I, I bombed. <clears throat> On the second one, I bombed. But that first one was enough to hook me. Do you remember anything from your first set? It was, uh, it was very short. It was maybe three minutes. And uh, I was just doing cartoons and impressions and just being very animated. And people were into it. So then from the very beginning, you already started doing the impressions and yes. stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, the second week, the week that I bombed, uh, someone had seen my, my first performance uh, and they hired me to come back the following week in the same room <laughs> where they had a comedy night. And he said, I'll give you 20 bucks. Come back and do that again. I was like, all right. And then I bombed. So my first, my first paid gig was a week later after I started. So technically speaking, that was like five hours worth of minimum wage back then. God, back in 1997. <coughs> uh, what was the minimum wage in 97? We'll like four or five that. bucks? Probably less. Oh, so yeah, you got paid. So, no, I, I did really good. You got a day's worth of oh, work. I, it was, there was Taco Bell after that, for sure. <coughs> you got booed off stage that day? Yes. Uh, not booed. Um, silence? Silence or just, yeah, it's that uncomfortable. When you, <laughs> you know when you're killing and you know when people are just staring and they're like, oh, yeah, that was okay. All right. He's trying. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, it, was, it was not booing. <clears throat> I've only been booed one time. In my career, like booed, booed, like booed, con todo, like with everything. And at when what point of your go ahead, go ahead. When that happened, did it discourage you from keep going, or did you ever? Oh no, I was already making it at that point. I'm uh-huh. like, hey, you guys, you guys just are having a bad night. <laughs> <laughs> they're having a yeah, bad they're, night. They're having a bad night. <laughs> not me. It was, it was that. They got offended because, uh, and it was my fault for um, not uh, knowing the. Uh, the politics of the the college sports teams. I was in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and I had made a comment about how I was performing at this college in Michigan, and I and that was the main opposition. That was yeah, that and was so, the and I didn't and I I knew that because I've done shows in Columbus, Ohio, which is the home of the Ohio State Buckeyes, and their direct rival is Michigan. But I figured since I was in Cleveland, that it wouldn't be the same. But clearly it was, and they they booed me for like ten minutes. It was stupid. What's the worst heckle you've ever been hit with, in your opinion? Worst heckle. Whatever, yeah, I'll, clearly if you remember, it's the worst. You know what I'm saying? I, well, for me... Or I if you have a top it, five. <laughs> well, no, there's no top five. I mean, <laughs> any, anytime I've, I've been heckled, uh, it's usually been, hey, man, uh, I, get, I, get heckle, I get nice heckles. People, I love you, or can you do that one joke, or, or me too. You know, there's no, I don't get the next, or that you suck, or that really? There, there's, I don't get those... You know, I'm at the point now where people pay to come out and see the show, so they're not trying to mess it up. If anything, they want to talk to me during the show. They want to engage. So uh, I was doing a special, and uh, I was telling a story about my mom, and my mom had just passed away. Rest in peace to your mother, by the way. Someone had uh, yelled something out, and I I wasn't even sure what they said, but the fact that I was telling a story about my mom, who had just passed away, and they're yelling stuff out, I I got pissed off that they were doing that. And... I, I told security, I go, please have this person removed from the building. Like, I wasn't even going to engage. I just I had him removed. And they kept yelling stuff out. And I'm going, nah. I go, you guys, come on. I'm trying to share something personal with you. And, and that was not cool. So, I mean, yeah. But as far as going back and forth, I'm not a confrontational a comedian who wants to engage. Mm-mm. You know, people say, oh, I'm trying to help your show. No, you're not. <laughs> I, I had a show before you got here. <laughs> you know? But fortunately now it's, it's very different. So if people yell things out, it's because of love. Hey, you know, I get a, I love you, or, hey, date my mom. I get, <laughs> I get, I get, I get that. I get, hey, date my mom or date my sister. I'm like, wow, okay. So like, <laughs> it's a different kind of Tinder, you know? <laughs> but, but the heckling, I've, uh, yeah, I think maybe early on when I was performing at bars, you know, but bars, everybody's talking, so it's hard to tell if you're being heckled. You know, it's just conversations in a room, and, and I didn't know that people were supposed to be quiet. I just figured, you know, they're letting okay. me get on stage. I'm louder. I have a mic. <clears throat> so, you know, that's, that's just the way There's that it went. There's that. Mm-hmm. Where have some of your best shows been at? Is this, what, would you say it's San Antonio? Uh, you know what? Some of the best shows have been overseas in Europe. Mm. In Europe, the crowds uh, are very, very different. Um, I call them soccer crowds where <laughs> I've had shows where people start stomping their feet. That's start hard. stomping their feet. And, and it's a, like a rumble, the rumble. The rumble in the room. And it's... Unless you experience it, man, it's just like, wow. It's amazing. Yeah. And you don't know, is that good or bad? The first time it happened, I'm like, they're pissed. They're going to riot. And, and the guy's like, they love you. And I'm like, why are they stomping? <laughs> 
we only stomp when we're trying to kill cucarachas or something, you know? And, <laughs> and so they, they were stomping, and then the, the clap is different. So it's not like a regular applause. The, the clap, it was like stomp, 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 stomp. And then they do this. Like hype. And it's, it's, it makes the room vibrate. Crazy. So, yeah, overseas. Overseas, definitely some of the biggest shows. Tight. Uh, uh, Greece was massive. We, we did a show in Greece, and the people did that in the building, and it just it, it made this, this incredible sound. Uh, that also happened in Saudi Arabia, of all places. Mm. Saudi Arabia, they, they, went, they, they got excited like that. How like, was it performing in uh, Mexico? Ooh, oh, the man, that was, uh, that, was, that was really, really, for me, a, a huge, huge moment because um, I was scared. That but, was that Performing in Mexico for me was terrifying. What were you scared of, the crowd or the law? Or? No, I was scared more so of the, um, the way I was going to be received. Mm. Mm. You know, I don't worry about these other countries. You know, I'm not from there. There's no direct connect and stuff like that. And again, people are excited. But with Mexico, I feel like if you're raza, if you're si eres mexicano, and 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 you attempt to perform in Mexico, especially if you're born here in the states, you're looked at like an outsider, like a pocho. And you, you, you're, mm-hmm. Eres un pocho, and so you better bring it. And if you're if you're coming sh- short, you're coming weak. They're gonna let you have it. Like the interviews, I tell the story about how, and it's funny. This will get back to my publicist. Uh, <laughs> I talk about how my publicist kind of ruffle feathers a little bit because he insisted that my interviews in Mexico be in English oh. mm. because my show's in English. So I don't want to go do interviews. Don't get me wrong. I speak Spanish, but it's different. It's Americanized. I learned it watching Telemundo and hanging out with people on the street. Can you speak a little bit of Spanish for the people? Because right now I could imagine in the comments you're going to get called a no sabo kid. No, no, yo no soy un niño de esos cebosos que no sabe. Yo entiendo. Yo puedo hablar español. Ese gordo sí entiende. Fluffy is a no sabo. Relax, bro, because then they'll start doing it. No, yo sí sé. You know, I'll be tuned all the music and the novelas and the getting yelled that as a kid that's right you know uh, i when people because that was one of the questions uh, with the um the reporters gabriel do you speak spanish and i said well i, I can order food <laughs> clearly, clearly no problem it's whenever people want to have a conversation about something that i'm not very familiar with so like well yeah you know that that's when i get tongue-tied because uh when i speak spanish i still think in english of and course I translate it in my head and sometimes the translation doesn't come out clean yeah i think in english you know so do you get, think get in english one what do you think in english oh yeah of course well, yeah, there's I mean, that. I'm born yeah. here. Uh, speak- no, and, and also, too, I'm not trying to claim to be, you know, because there's some people that are very fluent and they can pass for being, you know, they, they got dual citizenship because exactly. they're so good. So <laughs> my whole thing was I just wanted to make sure that when I did my show in Mexico, I was prepared and I was going to deliver a good show. But I was also uh, anticipating the pushback from people saying, oh, él, él no es de acá, él no es mm. mexicano de de veras, él es un pocho, él es de allá. <laughs> you know, a, ver, a ver cómo se va a presentar. Él es comediante, pero él no es Franco Escamilla. Él no es uno de esos otros comediantes que queremos. You know, big shout out to my buddy Franco. Mm. He actually uh, invited me to go to Mexico and, right. and do a show in Spanish. So I did a show. I can perform in Spanish. Oh, fire! I just, I just choose not to because it's very different. But you, but you, your your personality and your wit still comes across those, the normal way. Yeah, but I also oh. let the audience know. I know who I am. I'm not trying to play it off. I, yo sé que soy pocho. Yo sé que no soy de aquí. Yo sé que soy de allá. Pero, pero, you know, pero me entienden, verdad? <laughs> so it was funny because I, I, my buddy Franco, he's, you know, he's huge uh, he in, uh, in Latin America. And, and here in the U.S., he does incredible business, but his shows are all in Spanish. And so he invited me to perform with him in Spanish, and I invited him to perform with me Fire. in English. So I did a show in Mexico City, opening for him for 10 minutes in Spanish. That's dope. And I said, now you got to come to L.A. and you open for me at Staples Center 10 minutes in English. And so, you know, we, we flipped it. Mm. Who we, did better? We, we both agreed we both suck in each other's <laughs> We should never do that again. <laughs> we right. should just hang out and eat and have fun. <laughs> but, but scary, but it went over very well. And plus, um, my, dad, uh, my dad and I had a reunion after 15 years in mm. Mexico at that show. That's amazing. And I met my sisters for the first time at that show. Very so nice. it was a lot of things that happened. But the main thing was I was nervous um, and scared how, the, how Mexico was going to receive me. And in the end, it was a and in the it end, was positive. it was it was it was beautiful for many reasons, uh, well received, and I had this incredible reunion. And I think that a lot of uh, water now is under the bridge, you know, both in the relationship with my father and I, who I haven't seen in over fifteen years. And then that was the night of you know we got back together. I mean, so we put a lot of. 
things behind us. Are you guys on super good terms now? I wouldn't say super good terms, but there's not that hate animosity. and resentment and animosity. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. Progress is progress. Progress baby. is progress. I'm not mad at that. Speaking of progress, let's Hold talk up. a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. So you were talking about Latinos not embracing you because you're a pocho. Do you, <laughs> do you still get that from uh, Mexicans? I, now that I've broken the ice, I don't think so. Because mm. now the question is, when am I going to go back? Fire. Mm. That's yeah. right. And now other countries that are, you know, like I'm getting uh, calls to see about doing Colombia, doing shows in, in mm. Panama, uh, do, uh, Bolivia. Uh, where's uh, we gotten some other requests? Uh, El Salvador. So there's getting I'm getting requests to do shows uh, elsewhere. Mm. And now I feel a lot more confident now that Mexico is like, OK, te dejamos pinche like a, gordo. <laughs> like te, a se, se vale. OK, yeah, yeah. I got the, I got the cosign. Let's in case them. you're wondering, it, yeah, is, this place is legit, people. I need to let you know now. <laughs> this is not in some studio somewhere in Beverly Hills or somebody's garage. No, we. this is the real deal Holyfield. <laughs> yes. Talk to me about some of your the, the things that you've done first before anybody. Are you the first person, that, the first comedian, Mexican as well, that sold out Dodger Stadium? Uh, that is true, yes. Are you the first comedian? And, and just the first one to actually do the show. Period. Yeah, yeah. That was a big deal to take a chance on that because Let's they were like, uh, we've never done comedy at Dodger Stadium. It's always been musical acts. And so to take that chance, that was, like, that was a big deal. It had been two years since I had performed at Staples Center when it was still Staples Center. And then talking to Netflix, we were trying to figure out the next special. And we were supposed to do it in San Antonio, but I had got COVID. I got COVID two days before the taping. And then we had this idea, well, we're, shoot, you know, we, we're supposed to shoot a special, any ideas? And then uh, Netflix was going to have this Netflix as a joke comedy festival here in uh -huh. L.A. And they had all these shows. And they said, well, Gabriel, we want you to be the anchor for the show. We need something big. And we were thinking, we were thinking Dodger Stadium. And big shout out to Robbie Pryor over at Netflix. He, that was his idea. And I had thought about it, but I was like, ah, you know, you need a lot of support. That's not something you can do on your own. Your own. You need a team to be able to do and pull something off like that. And fortunately, everything worked out and we were able to do it. But yeah, it was, uh, it was the first. We were talking off a of camera about Dodger Stadium. And is it safe to say that that might be one of your best shows you've ever done? As far as the performance goes, I can say that I've done performance. I've, I've had much better shows. But as far as the experience and what it meant, yes, that was the greatest night of my career my life I, I said it was like you know the be definitely the best night of my career but it was the best night of my life just because that's amazing it was the biggest thing i've ever done and i did it at home Fact. and the hardest place to get love is always at home you always get received somewhere else before you get received like that at home why Fact. is that i don't know why that is it's like that with music too i think you know when i first started doing stand-up yeah i did my first show in long beach but i had to go on the road to do my first comedy club to do my first theater i didn't do it in la i did it in bakersfield you know when i did my first arena i didn't do it in la i did it in houston when i did my first you know you know it wasn't until i got to the stadium that finally the biggest thing i did 26 years later mm -hmm. was was la it's amazing you know what about the first gentleman with a funko pop are you the first comedian with a funko pop yes and are uh, you the only are you on the only? No, the other uh, jo Joe Coy has a, a Funko Pop. Uh, Jeff Dunham has a Funko Pop, and I think they're working on a Burt Kreischer one. But but uh, you were first. Yeah, and that 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 happened because um, you know I'm a fan of, of of Funko, and I saw that they didn't have a comedy category. You know they got a category for everything else: movies, uh, uh, television, uh, singers, athletes. Mm -hmm. No comics, and so. I reached out to Funko and I said, hey, would you be interested in licensing, you know, having a, a com there's a ton of comics, very popular. How come they don't have one? And they're like, well, you know, that's not, it's not, they didn't think that that was their thing, but they said, we know who you are. And I was like, okay, we tried again two years later. And this time they said, well, we're still not interested uh, in <laughs> licensing, but if you want to pay, we'll produce the product. And you can sell it on your own, but we're not going to sell it on our website and we're, we're not going to sell it in our stores, but we'll make the product for you. But you got to pay for the whole thing and you have to have a minimum order. And, mm -hmm. and they threw a crazy number at me and I said, well, let's let's try it. You know, uh -huh. Unless you try. And I, down. it was basically a semi truck worth the Funkos that showed up and we were able to sell it out. in I don't know, about four months. We sold a whole semi truck. Did they license you after that? They tried. But at that point, it was too late. So now all of my deals with Funko, it's it's only, you know. I, I pay to have it produced. Do they give they you a good license. deal? 
Um, good, I don't even know what you call a good deal because I mean, you I know, don't the, know. The, the Funko sell for like twenty bucks at the shows. I don't, I don't pay twenty bucks for the Funko. For Clearly, Marvel. yeah. So yeah, it's enough to to call it a good day. Which one is your favorite? Because there's several, correct? The first one, because that means the most, and the fact that the first Funko Pop actually says number one on it lets any other comic. Who, who gets one from now on know that I was the one that, that started. <laughs> so that means a lot to me. Anytime I could take, some, you know, take something for the first time, that always means a, a, a big deal for me. Here's another big one that I wasn't aware of until just yesterday. Shout out to TK for that because I may have asked her a question or two. Um, you're the only other person to grace the bottle of Tapatio other than the Charro. Pretty cool, huh? That's, f- and I think it's you know, lit. you know what I think is awesome too is that my dad was a was a mariachi. <laughs> I think it's funny that yeah, the, the other person that wound up on the bottle was the son of a mariachi. How does that play out? Like, how does that happen? I did a joke about Tapatio years ago, where I was talking about how my dad was MIA. He was not in the picture, and I would ask my mom, "Ama, you know, do you have any pictures of my dad?" And my mom grabbed the Tapatio bottle and she goes, "He looks like that. Así se parece." And that was the running joke that my dad was the guy on the Tapatio bottle. So years later, when I had an opportunity to meet the family, because it is a family business, they're not, it's not like, you know, they, they are straight. The whole family runs that business. Facts. Yes. Yes. And so they're big fans. And of course, I'm a big fan of the product. And the 50 year anniversary was coming up and they wanted to see about doing something to celebrate the 50 year anniversary of Tapatio. And so we talked about it. And, you know, how what about the idea of putting me on the bottle? They saw, they came down to visit my, um, my business and they saw the Funkos and the other products and stuff that I sell on the road as a comic and they thought it was a good fit. You suggested it yourself. It, it was a couple people that talked about it. I but, like it. But it was one of those things where almost like the, 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 the Funko Pop, it wasn't like they started selling it at stores, they produced it and then I started selling it. Ah. So again, the same thing, but there. But nevertheless, it's endorsed. Yes, it's definitely. valid. It's it's authentic. a it's a, it's a real bottle. Yes, and uh, they we did it twice. So they they did one where it was me, uh, my dogs, and I, <laughs> and the second one was we did the uh, the Tapatio man claiming to be my father, holding me as a baby. So that with my face all big, you That's know. So fire. it was it was pretty cool. But yeah, that that was huge because I mean it's like we all grew up eating it. Of course, you know, I like, eat it to this day. So. The, to do something like that that's organic, you don't have to force it. You know, it'd be different. Hey, can you do Tabasco? I don't like Tabasco. It's free. It tastes like vinegar. It's just, I, I don't Facts. like it. You know, it, it, this was very organic. So, like, for example, anytime I've done <coughs> products that are things that I use, like, for example, if Diet Coke called me and said, hey, you want to do a thing? I drink Diet Coke. You know? Easy. Yeah. Or Volkswagen, because I, I drive Volkswagens. I have Volkswagen buses. Does, if Volkswagen wants to do a thing, it's organic. So it's... It just, it, it worked out. Speaking of the Diet Coke, because I also asked, what would you like? You know, so I could accommodate you and make you feel comfortable. And one of the things they told me was a bologna sandwich. Because I said, what should we get Gabriel to eat before I chose tacos? or It was between tacos or pizza. Um, they told me bologna sandwiches. And just, I'd really like to unpack that, sir. Bologna. Bologna. Uh, I grew up eating bologna and cheese sandwiches. Uh, I mean, yeah, i you know, we lived, uh, <laughs> we didn't have everything uh, growing up, uh, but my mom always had food on the table. So whether it was, you know, arroz y frijoles or making freaking chorizo and huevo or huevos con weenie, uh, I loved bologna and cheese sandwiches. You've never I been to know. jail, right? I've never, never been in jail. Thank God. And you're blessed for that. But let me tell you, they have spicy bologna in jail. Have you ever had spicy bologna? Uh, never had. Well, actually, I take that back. I have. It's probably not the same. It's probably, <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you, I do not f- with bologna sandwiches anymore at all. But it's all right. Is there any other deli meats you f- with or bologna exclusively? Well, below, you know, I, I mean, I'm sure you'll have f- an Italian sub or a tuna sandwich. Right. But I mean, bologna on my rider when I'm on the road in my dressing room, I always ask for bread, white, uh, white bread, uh, mayonnaise, um, mustard uh, and Oscar Mayer bologna. Uh, <laughs> I also like, uh, sometimes I'll ask for a, a George Foreman grill, and I'll grill my bologna in there. Oh, you're a wild dude. Or sometimes I'll ask for Spam, and I'll cut up the Spam, and I'll make Spam sandwiches. So I like, yeah. You're crazy. I like you it. You know, yes, I could eat better, but uh, I'm still, it's what I grew up on, and it makes me, you know, I, I feel comfortable. It's comfort food. Like, my favorite <sighs> thing 
ever in life to eat to this day. Just a plain cheese quesadilla. I like so it. So someone said, "Hey, man, you know what's you know what 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 do you want? Just just a quesadilla." Pizza is my favorite thing, and I'm a stress eater. So if you ever, if we ever get to the point where we're talking, I on think we both basis, been stressed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Los dos. They actually call me your twin. Oh yeah, I get it a lot. Hey, oh, it's shit. fluffy. Well, here he hey, is. Right now we're stressing out these chairs. That's right. Yeah. I'm gonna put the Spider Man in a pointing at each other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's hilarious. So let's circle back. Let me ask you something. What happens when Fluffy isn't Fluffy? Is he still Fluffy? Fluffy's a nickname. It's not a character. So it's like it's um, it's not like it's an alter ego. I you feel know, it. You know what I mean? No, yeah, you're it's, you, clearly. It's not like, uh, you know, there's there's been other entertainers who they they have a different voice on stage. So like, let's say there's there's uh, somebody out there who speaks like this, but then when they're on stage. They, they speak like this. Yeah. I feel it. You know, there's there are screamers, guys that, that talk normal, and then on stage they scream their set. They're aggressive. Or or guys that that you know they sound normal, and then you know I tell you right now. Yeah, they have a shtick when they're up there. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, hey, this is this is the way I perform, but then <laughs> off stage, hey, what's up, bro? Hey, what's going on? You know, it's it's pretty much the same. So there's not like a, a difference. And then the fact that I'm sharing my personal stories on stage keeps me me. Fluffy's just a nickname. It's a nickname. It's not a, a, you know, nothing else. I mean, it started, what, 15, 16 years ago? Uh, it was a joke where I said, I'm not fat, I'm fluffy. And then at the end of the show, people weren't saying, good job, Gabriel. They were saying, you're funny, Fluffy. And I got Fluff. pissed off. I'm like, why are they calling me Fluffy? It's just one joke. And then I thought about dropping the joke. But at the time, I only had like 10 minutes, 15 minutes of material. Ended up being so, fucking amazing. Yeah. And then I just learned to embrace it. And then I learned... I learned how to brand yourself. And branding was one of the most important things I had to learn because once I learned how to brand, boom, it was over. Circling back to your dogs, um, I know you threw a big uh -huh. you threw a big party for them. Uh, people came in suits and ties and everything. How was that? I threw yes, I threw my uh, my little girl dog Risa, uh, a four pound chihuahua, a quinceañera. <laughs> and it was the quinceañera of quinceañeras. Like I don't have a daughter. So, you know, <laughs> it was one of those, uh, I was on TikTok one day, freaking TikTok, mm -hmm. uh, and some guy in Mexico threw his chihuahua a quinceañera, and it was legit. And I said, there's no way that guy loves his dog more than I love my dog. <laughs> and here's what happened. I was originally supposed to uh, throw myself a, a big party to celebrate the Dodger Stadium show. I set aside money for that, but just I went back to work, but I still set aside money for a party. So I said, let's do the party, but instead of making it about me, let's make it about my dog, and then maybe I'll have more fun and enjoy myself. And I did. I had a blast. But then the problem is when you throw a big-ass rager, because it was, it was big. It was a big party. So How many a, humans? Uh, 400. How many dogs? <sighs> that was probably 20. Was there a designated poo area? Actually, there was. There was an actual designated poo area. We had this uh, astroturf <laughs> behind the dance floor. Okay, bro. I know, right? It's the way. So uh, word got out about the quinceañera. Uh, I told people they could take pictures and video. I said, but don't take pictures or video of me. And everybody I invited were people that I knew. So it wasn't like it was a fan experience that I was robbing somebody of. It, I, I'm going to see all these people later. But somebody <laughs> recorded me, and then they posted it, and it, it went viral. And then I took the video, and I said, no, no. If anybody's going to post it, it's going to be me. So then I posted it, and that's when I started getting phone calls from Good Morning America and all these morning radio shows, and they wanted to talk about the quinceañera. And uh, the problem was is that when people found out what it cost, then that's I started getting backlash, and then people were like... That's weird, though, right? Aren't you able to throw whatever kind of party you so choose? Yeah, but then of course, then you start getting hit with the, you know, you, do you have any idea uh, or what you could have done with that? The people you could have helped, uh, this and but you know, if I would have bought a car, it would have been that cool. Cost the same, no one would have said shit. How much did you? How much was the party? Oh, well, it already got out that it was it was over a hundred k. It was over a hundred k. That's right. What was the most expensive thing? It, uh, like everything's out, right? It's yeah. all good. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. so then what was the most expensive shit you spent on? I, I don't know. What what was the most expensive thing about that party? Oh, TK, you were there for this. Oh, yeah, she's part of the team. So oh, she was, yes. She was part of the the we had a uh we had a build a bear station. We had a build a bear and uh we Did had, the dogs I, build any build bears? Bear. No, come on. Uh ice sculptures, uh oh, dance floor bands, um dance floor had, bands. 
Oh, we had a, an animal performer, a, um, this man, he, he's incredible. He does an incredible show. Christian and Scooby, they, they do uh, <laughs> all the halftime shows for NBA games. Is it the yeah, dog the that like fucking yes, does the, the Chihuahua? Sh- okay. Yeah. So we hired him to come out and, and do a performance. And and all the bands and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it was it was really really cool. So uh, what was the most expensive? I don't know. What was the best band that you had perform? The best band uh, that night. Ooh, I want to say we had Los Operadores. <laughs> they get down. Uh, but I mean, we also have you know people that do cover you know cover bands and stuff like that. I, I'm not sure the names. I just get the bill at the end. What'd you serve? Oh God, we had everything. We had uh. Uh, taco stand. We had stuff for for vegetarians because I got some of those friends too. Yes. Uh, you know, we had a taco stand. We had uh, bacon wrap hot dogs. We had steaks. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, we had uh, d- different kinds of elotes. So we had the esquite. We had the That's fire. corn on a palo and everything. It was, it was good. It was a big party. It was really really good. What'd you give the dogs to eat? You know what? I think they had a little bit of everything. They both love uh, steak and chicken. And I know that we just oh, that's you cool. know, here you go, dale gas. But Fair I, enough. I, you know, it was nice until, you know, again, having to read comments and stuff like that. And people were like, oh, you could have done so much better. We're disappointed. How could you waste money like that? One guy was like, you know how many people you could have fed? And I'm like, yeah, 400. That's how many. <laughs> had, had Tupperware. And people took home plates. But uh, I felt like, you know what? I wanted to celebrate my dogs. And I mean, I you don't regret it, right? The, what I regret is it not making it more private. I feel the fact, that the fact that that got out, that's what bothered me because it was supposed to be a private thing. I wasn't trying to get clout from it. I wasn't trying to put it out there. But once it was out there, I didn't want someone else capitalizing on that. So I wanted to you know, take it back. Is it pretty hard, uh, like maintaining your private license to such a public figure? Uh, it is. So if I want to do a party or something like that, it's it's one of those like good luck trying to uh, manage it. Mm. So now, like, for example, for my birthday that I just had uh, last month, I told everybody, you know what? There's no way you're going to control it. If anything, tag me. So I said, go for it. Take all the pictures, all the video you want. This way, I didn't even have to stress about it. And then it just, you know, it is what it is. It's Gabriel's birthday. And it went people, crazy. People, people want to get mad, they get mad. But, you know, I'm, at the end of the day, who paid for their own per- party? It was me. Can't be mad at it. What's the best give you, gift you've ever received at one of these parties from, from somebody? You know what? I'm pretty basic with the gifts because everybody says, oh, man, what do we buy this guy? What you know, he's so hard to shop for. I'm very easy. Uh, Starbucks gift cards because uh, I'm always getting my coffee and stuff. Uh, I like this is going to sound weird. Socks. I like I like calcetines. I like a fresh pair of calcetines. I just I like socks. Uh, God, what else? Uh, tequila, Patron, uh, and anything for my dog. So like if, you know, like uh, PetSmart gift cards. What was the what, most popular thing that I, you know, people were bringing uh, aside from gift cards? Yeah, I got a, a probably 80 bottles were given to me. I'm going to stop you right there. You said Patron. Yeah. So did you feel offended when I told you Patron was trash when we took that shot earlier? Oh, not at all. Because, you know, a lot of people don't like Patron. Uh, and here's I used thing. to like it. Don't get me wrong. Carry on, though. My bad. The thing with Patron is that um, I travel around the world and... Patron is available everywhere. Facts. So, for I example, people say, well, Starbucks isn't even good coffee. I know. <laughs> I know, but it's available everywhere. I can go to any city and find a Starbucks and have the same kind of coffee experience here as in Des Moines, uh, as in New York, <laughs> as in freaking London. It's the same. So the same thing, like, you can find Subway everywhere, McDonald's everywhere, uh, Patron everywhere. So consistency is everything. And since I travel so much, having access to stuff. And, you know, I don't want to have to drag my own bottle with me. Then then that looks like you have a problem. Um, best hotel coffee you've ever had? Best ho- I couldn't even tell you. This guy's a coffee drinker. I don't really do caffeine anymore. So, like, do you like the Bust- Bustelos and stuff like that or, or the Keurig No, I'm a Starbucks or? guy, too. Oh, okay. What are, what's, what's your drink? What's your Starbucks drink? Dude, I'm so basic. Upside down caramel macchiato I'm with toasted oat milk I'm, and fuckity fuckity. I'm not one. Of, I always make fun of my, my That's buddy. That's this guy. My That's buddy me. Ivan. My buddy Ivan will place an order at the drive-thru, and I'm like, dude, I'm questioning everything about your life right now. Because he's like, with a sprinkle of, of cinnamon, with uh, shaken, with a, 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 you know, he, he, he breaks it down so much. At the end, we're just looking at him like, I don't know you, bro. I, I think know. I had to go get a Starbucks order for my padrino recently, and he had some weird extra pumps of this or that. Yes, or- yes. With me, it's just an iced coffee, a Trenta iced coffee with heavy cream and 10 Splenda. Now, I know it's a lot of Splenda, but I like my coffee like I like morchata. It has to sweet. be sweet. That horchata is fire, by the way, just in case you haven't tried I'm it. I'm about to get to it. It's crazy. But uh, as far as you saying the, that you don't like Patron, that's, you know, 
hey, some people, you know, it's alcohol. It's some people like stuff, some people don't. Straight I or don't, mixed? Uh, I take it straight. So, uh, but I like it chilled. It has to be cold. And I just do shots. It's not like I'm drinking it on on the rocks or or yeah. mixing it with something. I, feel I do I do shots. I'm just I'm just trying to get a buzz. I like it. You like know, and then if you're playing some mariachi music, you know, just doing copas, it's easy. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a ton of great tequila out there, but yeah, it's it's I'm a basic B dude. Tell me the drunkest you can recall being, or a story that you've heard about you being drunk that you don't recall even better. Wow. What's the drunkest you've ever seen on TK? I'm just kidding. Let July, July 15th, 2023. <laughs> that was my birthday. I what started, was that, a I month start, ago? I started off the night with a bottle of Patron, and I finished off the night holding a bottle in 1942. That's so apparently, apparently right. the, 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 the tequila got better as the night progressed. How drunk would you say you were? Blackout? Oh, Blackout? Oh, I passed out for sure. I I, uh, I had a uh, hangover for like two days. Uh, but I think that's also because I'm 47. Not no, 27. no, absolutely. Absolutely. I could have like two or th- I don't like to drink that much anymore. But if I have two or three shots, I'll feel a little woozy in the morning. This guy, on the other hand. Yes. Yes. You're an alcoholic, I'd like to say, my friend. No, I just enjoy life <laughs> and live it. How did I see? And like, I don't drink all the time, but when I do, I... <clears throat> All yeah. the way? Yeah. Do you have someone ready to take care of you at a moment's notice? Well, uh, I don't drink alone, so anytime I do drink, it's either on the road or, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm home, then I'm home. So it's not a concern. I'm not trying to, you know, get drunk somewhere far. And I, I am guilty of, of going around the corner to, to get, a, get a drink. But, yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite dive bar in uh, Long Beach? Because I know Long Beach has got a lot of freaking bars, dude. Uh, there's a place called Blondie's in Long Beach. Uh, I prefer a, a, a bar called Roxanne's, but you said dive. And uh, Blondie's for me has always been a little shady. <laughs> <laughs> shout it's, out to Blondie's. Yeah, shout out to Blondie's. They got the, 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 the machine in the bathroom with all the different things you could buy with the quarters. You know, condoms that glow in the dark. or I think, Cigarettes? I, forget, mm, I don't think cigarettes, but they sell all kinds of just, you know. Stuff. Stuff. In the uh, the little the little machine. Who is the switch lanes? Who? Hold up, I got a question. Oh, let's go. So, like, I I really appreciate your comedy because it's really family friendly, and uh, as opposed to like other comedians who you know are more vulgar, do you feel like it's uh, harder to come up that way? It it is definitely harder to um, do a show that is more inclusive of everyone because you just got to make sure that. You know, you you want people to want to come out. You don't. If if you're aiming for a certain niche, then I feel like you're you're you know. I don't want to say it's easier, but I think it's harder to try to be able to capture everyone. Mm. Uh, in the beginning, when I first started doing stand up, I was very dirty. I was very dirty. I was cussing a lot. Really? Every, oh, filthy. And uh, my whole act was impressions of cartoons having sex. <laughs> that's, that's, that was my whole act. I didn't talk about myself. I was just doing voices and characters and sound effects. And I was really good at, at, at doing things, uh, you know, doing characters and stuff like that. And, and so every character I did was just having sex. And it was easy. It was Example, it was easy. by any chance? Uh, Marvin, the Mar- Marvin, Marvin the Martian having sex with Bugs Bunny. You know, and so you picture this little alien, the little Marciano, right, with Bugs Bunny. And he's like, oh, my, oh, my modulator. Oh, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, that's a, that's the kind of show I was doing when I was 20 years old. At, it probably at went bar. over well, though, right? It went over very. I could still get a laugh with that. <clears throat> but uh, someone pulled me aside. A comic by the name of Joy Medina pulled me aside and he goes, hey, bro, let me, let me talk to you. You're you're very likable. You're very funny. And. I think that if you were to take the cuss words out, because I was saying I was dropping the F-bomb freaking every other second, man. It was like a tick. It's unimaginable. And he goes, take the cuss words out. You will still be funny. Work on being funny. Don't work on the cussing. He said, uh, when opportunities come, because they will, because you're likable. He says, you won't have to edit your performance. So when you get a call from The Tonight Show, you don't have to edit out the cuss words. You will already be mainstream." And mainstream was a word that was like a, um, a powerful word back in 1997 when I first started absolutely. doing comedy. They said, if you can be mainstream, man, you can work anywhere. And he was absolutely right. He saw something I didn't. And it was the best advice I ever got. Work clean, do shows that everyone can enjoy. And it's just you're going to open up the whole world. Mm. And so to answer your question, doing a show like that, yes, 
it is harder and i would i feel like getting the laughs was easier throwing the cuss words mm -hmm. or talking you know talking anytime you were you would bash certain like back in the day if you were bashing like uh if you were mexican and you were talking shit about the the president oh it was instant funny and i even <laughs> did it in one of my specials like if, if you make fun of certain things it's just a given that you're going to get uh people on your a side quicker yeah. yeah but to do shows that everybody can enjoy that's really hard and i and i still struggle with that because the uh, the world is ever changing and and like you got to there's more people now and more changes and more things you got to try to uh, embrace in order to, you know, be be whatever it is that you are. And so I struggle with it because now I'm 47, not 27. And so I'm, I'm, a, I'm like a viejo now. Like I, uh, some of these things I just can't get on board with. Uh -huh. And that's hard. So I have to check myself and and not vent and that's what I, I run into problems sometimes because i will drink on stage from time to time and i want to i want to get certain things off my chest because i feel like the stage is a an incredible place to to open up and sometimes people connect and relate to you and it's it's energy that goes out and energy that comes back to you so a lot that's of times reciprocal. you feel the people understanding and feeling you and in turn you're like wow okay okay i'm i'm I'm, You're I'm, not alone. I'm not alone on this one. And it's it's really cool, but you got to be careful what you say now. And that wasn't always the case. And so... Uh, is it too sensitive now? It very much is. When, uh, it very much is because I, I pride myself on doing shows that everybody can enjoy. But even I find myself slipping from time to time <laughs> and getting people going, I can't believe you said that or brought that up. And I'm like... So light too, like, probably. Oh my God, really? Okay. And so, yeah, it's 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 getting harder, dude. When did you notice that that comedy that you had to be more sensitive with the comedy? Like around what year? I want to say around what a little time? bit before COVID. Um, my my management team, the office, will get people sending physical letters, <laughs> written letters, and stuff. Like that. And for the most part, it's people wanting meet and greets, pictures. Can you sign something? You know, somebody uh, <laughs> somebody is is sick. They would like a message from you. And and you know, that's all well. You know, happy to do you know uh, stuff like that. But from time to time, people will vent. Oh, I was at the show, and you brought up this, or said this, or said this. Mm. And sometimes it's just like, oh, come on, just tear it up. But when I started to get <laughs> detailed notes about okay you know not, and not only with me but remember i take a team of people on the road so it's i'm not the only comedian i have other comedians on the show and i remember i had gotten this one letter that was just so detailed and i'm like uh they're like you know the the other people that you have with you are are representing you and 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 it, i i felt that i didn't even want to stick around to see your show because i was that offended in the beginning mm. and it was one of those things where it's like oh, man, really okay and unfortunately, I acted on that one a little too quickly. And, uh, you know, I regret it. And, and hopefully we're, I'm still working on mending that one. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just it's, it's not as comfortable as it used to be. Mm. And for me, I do all my own social media. So anytime you see social media stuff out there, post, it's all me. I'm the one that reads everything. And some people say, well, you shouldn't read everything. Well, I have to. It's the fact that I give a shit and I read comments and I'm like, oh, well, I did not know that. Or maybe there's an opportunity to connect <laughs> with somebody that maybe needed something that I could help with. A quick little, you have no idea how much a little click in the little heart means to somebody. Oh my God, he saw my comp, my, oh, day. Yeah, my day is made. He <coughs> saw it. Just looking at a story, I get people that'll circle, they'll screenshot the pic and resend it to me. I can't believe you saw my story. Yeah. You know? So it's hard to it's hard to not uh, have certain comments affect you. Mm. But on stage, I try to put on the best show I can, and I try to make sure that everybody has fun. And from time to time, people don't like it, and I try to let everybody know we're all here to have fun. We're here to laugh. We're here Absolutely. to have a good time. And if you consider the source, I'm not here to hurt anybody. But if you got hurt by something that you didn't like that came out of my mouth, that's that's on you. <laughs> that's on you. And and I'm not gonna apologize. Because I didn't do anything malicious. I wasn't attempting. Now, if I came out and I said, if oh, it's you, premeditated. you people this or you people that or this and this and this and this. And, okay, you got me. But if, if you didn't like the fact that I made a comment about something, dude, pick somebody else. I'm not sure I've ever heard anyone ask you this question, but are there any Latino comics that you looked up to when you were coming up? I know there's a, a plethora of amazing comics that were before you, but were there any Latino ones that stood out to you directly? Uh, you know what's crazy is that and I, now I sound like that. back when I started, there was just there was four. You're old, people. Fool, it's okay. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, now there's so many 
great comedians out there. And it's, uh, but back when I first started, the guys that, that I really enjoyed watching, uh, clearly I was a big fan of Paul Rodriguez because Paul, Paul was the guy. He was, he was the guy. Anytime I'd see something that had Paul in it, I always gravitated to, to I feel Paul. disrespectful. I forgot about Paul for a second. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, you know what? There was a time. I was the Oscar <laughs> de la Hoya. <laughs> you know? Paul, That's Paul right. was, Paul was the guy that started it for, for all of us, even for George. And George probably won't admit that. Now I was working before that put on. Hey, yeah. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> I definitely I, I looked up and, and George George and I were kind of like in that uh, he I feel like he popped after Carlos Mencia popped uh, Mencia was huge for a while and then you know but Paul was the original guy there was other guys out there like uh, guys that would give me opportunities like Gilbert Gilbert Esquivel was a, a, a comic who he had a room with a guy named uh, Joe the Boomer Cervantes who was a, a huh. big radio DJ back in the day who was all over Power 106 and other stations him and Gilbert had a room at the Laugh Factory, and I would do shows there. Uh, Rudy Moreno had a bunch of rooms either at the Ice House uh, or a couple other rooms around town, and so we would do shows there, and, and I would see these guys on TV. There were shows called uh, uh, Funny is Funny <coughs> or uh, uh, Culture Clash back in the day. I think had, I've heard had of that. shows, and so they would feature uh, Latino comics, and so I, I saw a couple guys out there. Um, I'm trying to think. But as far as influential, I want to say it was, it was Eddie Murphy, Robin Williams, Paul Rodriguez. If Eddie Murphy was, were to perform Raw today, would he be canceled? He would definitely be canceled. There's no way Eddie Murphy could <laughs> beat Eddie Murphy right now. And the idea of him coming back and not being Eddie Murphy, <clears throat> there's how do you do it? How do you do it? But as far as the Latinos go, like now, there's so many out there, and it's, it's awesome to see. Whereas back in the day, it was just a handful of, of comics. Who's your favorite young comedian coming up right now? It could be anyone. I'm not looking for any particular. Favorite answer. young comedian. I just did a show the other day with uh, Marcelo. Uh, who's on Saturday Night Live? Oh, God, I'm trying to think of his last name. I just, it's, it's I'm losing. <laughs> he's uh, Cuban. Uh, he's on, he's on TV already. He's, he's very funny. He's hysterical. He's very funny. Uh, Ralph Barbosa is another one. Uh, there's, there's a, um, God, Ken. Uh, I'm trying to think of his last name. I just messaged him the other day. Otro gordito. He's, he's really funny. Um, there's, there's a bunch of new guys that are, and, and girls. There's a bunch of new comics out there. That's dope. And I actually want to put together. Uh, like a like a festival of comics to just come and hang out and have fun and and just like wow you know because that'd be I, very I think, dope. I think there's enough out there now where we could actually do a big festival. Whereas back in the day, it's like all right, uh, you you call Gilbert, I'll call Rudy, uh, somebody call you know. <laughs> <laughs> now there's enough yeah, now. Now Not there's just enough. A yeah, you could have nights of shows. One time, I think I read that. If I'm not mistaken, I did read that you didn't necessarily like DC over Marvel. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Now, uh, it's not where, a I'm, go of, where not I'm going with that, though, is how do you feel about them having a... Uh, well, well, hold on. Uh, let's just be clear. I'm more of a, a fan of Marvel. Well, duh. Uh, Marvel's my thing. Uh, DC is like, it struggles. It struggles. Uh, Batman. It's Batman, bro. Don't hate on Batman, uh, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Batman, Superman, or Wonder Woman. I actually love Wonder Woman's pretty awesome. Um... But yeah, Marvel just has a better product. It's a, it's, I'm not it's, mad at it's it. It's done better. It's brighter for sure. Yeah, but I am I am a Marvel guy. How do you feel about uh, DC coming out with the first Mexican superhero? Blue though? Beetle. Blue Beetle. Pretty amazing. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, after he killed it on Cobra Kai, you know, I, I send him messages. I'm like, hey, man, keep killing it on That's Cobra dope. Kai. You're doing a great job with it. I'm happy for him that, that he, <clears throat> he got asked to uh, to play Blue Beetle. Pretty amazing, right? Yeah. I have not seen it yet, but I will, have I. I, will go <laughs> I will go check it out. I will go check it out. And, you know, people are going to say, oh, he's going to go watch a DC movie. I thought you were all about Marvel. I am, but I still I will still watch the other one. Duh. I'm not, you know, so the word hate is pretty strong. I just prefer Marvel. So then who's your favorite superhero then? Iron Man. I respect it. Iron Man all day. And I know people will say, oh, well, Batman and Iron Man, very similar. Ah, Iron Man flies. He's metal. And, uh, and, and Iron Man is open. <clears throat> he tells everybody, it's me. Tony's down. It's me. It's me. Sometimes I can't breathe. And I got to put the mask up. And está haciendo un calor in here. It's all sweaty. It smells like sobaco and fundido in the suit. But then you close it up and then fly away. <laughs> Who's your favorite superhero, Juan? Me? I like Spider-Man. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I don't really. I think I'm going to prefer uh, Iron Man over Spidey. My kid likes Spider Man the best, though. I grew up on Spider Man. Spider Man's cool. Sp Spider Man is cool. Is that and Stan's first? Stan Lee? Yeah, is that Stan Lee's first? Um, I think that Spider Man was his, definitely one of his more popular original ones. ones yeah. yeah. 
<clears throat> What's your dream project if you could? Well, I guess you just a said. A Marvel project. Ha <laughs> Putting it out there, yeah. If I, if I could be in a Marvel film, uh, and I wouldn't even have to be a superhero. That's a I, I'd be the guy. Sell, I'd be the guy selling freaking tires at the shop. Hey, can I put tires on your car? You know, uh, <laughs> Spider-Man? <laughs> I, as long as I could be in a movie, I, I wouldn't care as long as it was a Marvel. Do you ever, have you ever listened to Chicano rap? Latin rap of any, of any type? Uh, man, growing up, Lighter Shade of Brown was always my go-to. You know, ODM, yeah. That's crazy. I was just uh, on stage MC, with MC night. Magic. MC Magic, man. <coughs> MC, I could listen to MC Magic all day. Uh, you know, and of course, when, you know, MB writers and everything, back in the day, that was, that was my go-to. But, but MC Magic, man, that, that dude just flows. So if I could ask you for a top Baby five. Baby Bash, también. Who's, like your top, who's your top five, then, out of all the Latin rappers that you're familiar with? It, it would all be old school, guys. Uh, oh, that's, not, I'm that's not fine. As, I'm not as familiar with everybody, because now I feel like there's a lot. Just like comedy. It's back a wave. In day, back in the day, there was only a handful, and now there's a lot, and the same thing goes with, with rap, where back in the day, it was a handful of guys that you knew, and... You know, because back then it was Frost, you know, Kid Frost and, you know, Lighter Shade of Brown and, you know, NB Riders. Uh, God, I'm trying to think who else we had back then. Uh, you ever heard of Brownside? Little Rob. Um, no, I haven't. It's fine. And then, of course, there's always that argument. And, and, and I had a roommate and he goes, he was from Texas. He goes, no, nah, bro. But what about SPM? I go, well, SPM. I don't know. I don't know what, what SPM. He goes, that's you, right. He goes, you don't know. You don't know South Park Mexican. I go, I go, we ha there's a Mexican on South Park. <laughs> I go, is that Kenny? Well, who, which one's Mexican? He goes, no, man, there's a rapper. There's a rapper, man. He's the best. And I'm like, um, okay. I, I had no idea who that was. But it took a friend of mine uh, from Texas, and he came, and he would just preach the gospel every day. You got to hear him. You got to hear him. You got. And then, of course, then you start hearing all the back and forth, and then the, the, you know, the back stories. And then so it kind of... Uh, you got to be conflicted. Can I enjoy? Even I Fluffy enjoy? heard the backstory. I like it. You know, it's like, but it's like with anything. Like, like, can you still listen to R. Kelly? I knew you were going to you know? go there. It's like, can you listen to R. Kelly? I'm Cannot. Like, well, not out loud. But <laughs> every now and then, every now and then, I'll I'll, I'll be in the car and you know, his mind I was. See, I don't see no, anybody his, watching me. His mind was telling him no. Yeah, but his body was telling him yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard, man. You know. One of the greatest comedians of all time is is Bill Cosby, oh. and people are like, "You have to erase him. You can't. You can't say that he was fun. He was one of the funniest comedians of all time. Now, what he did in his personal life clearly made bad choices. I was gonna make a horrible joke, I'm you know, and I'm it. sure it would probably <laughs> resonate. But uh -uh. <laughs> he, you got he got uh, entertainers that you know they they put whatever it is that they put out there that that affects people in a positive way. That's the part that I embrace. And clearly, you know, uh, the, the things that they did bad is the things that they did bad. And you got to, you know, they, 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 like I got them. They messed up. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It, it really is. But you, you got to still acknowledge it. So do you feel like people should separate the talent from the person's actions? Or do you still hold them accountable? Like, I still oh. listen to Michael Jackson. Mm. And I don't care what people say about Michael Jackson. Does Michael Jackson exactly. have any out-of-court settlements, though? I don't know, but now I heard that he's getting accused of something the other day. The guy's been dead for like 10 years. And they're, they're saying something. I'm just like, man, let me just hear the music in this. Like, not. He's bad, and he knows it. Mm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I hey, can't help it. Your impersonations, were you always like that? Or did you find inspiration from other comedians or people? From the gate, he said. Uh. Uh, yeah, out the gate. Uh, you know, just I think that if I hear somebody long enough, <laughs> I, can, I can start to... Do do a voice and, and mimic. If if nothing else, <coughs> the cadence and, and the, the 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 influx in the voices and you know certain you start to pick it up if you hear it long enough. Who's your favorite uh, impression that you've ever done? It's always been the girl voice. Oh my god, seriously! Like that freaks people out. <laughs> so it's not even a, an actual person. It's just it's just a the vibe. Fact I, the fact that I could do that, <laughs> and then people would freak out when I was you know like when I did the impression of Paul. Uh, I remember talking to Paul's old manager. And Paul's old manager goes, dude, that is so freaking scary that you do that. <laughs> you know, because you know they, they, you talk to the right guy. They'll tell you. You know, Paul always talks. <laughs> Paul always talks with his hands. He's, he's pointing, and he'll say big words that don't mean nothing. Like, <laughs> you know, consequently, I was uh, I was hanging out over there. I like uh, it. That guy. Uh, I do shit like that. <laughs> so Paul was always a fun fun voice for me to do. And then Paul would tell people, hey, he does me. And I'm like, stop telling people I do you. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> That's right. That's great. What were you going to say before I cut you off, pal? Oh, man, I was going to ask a good one. I forgot. Cat oh, but by the way, uh, top five, uh, definitely, let's see. Back in the day, Kid Frost, uh, Lighter Shade of Brown. Uh, 
I, like I said, I love Baby Bash. When him and, and Frankie J would do sh- Frankie J was at my birthday. Big shout out to Frankie J. He performed. He sang Happy Birthday to me in English and Spanish. That's dope. And he performed. And that was the surprise. So Frankie J, thank you. That was that was incredible that he showed up. Uh, my cousin Chino uh, has a good connection with him. He's a DJ in San Diego. That's right. Shout out to Chino. Chino. Uh, let's see. What did I leave out there? Little, uh, I like Little Rob. It's well documented uh, what I say. Yeah. And big shout out to MC Magic. Ese vato, dude. Love him. Any new generation that you can mention? I'm it, not mad at you. You know why? Way. You know why I don't want to mention anybody from this new generation because I feel like everybody's fighting, and I feel like if you say one person, then then you know it's the opposite of the Taylor Swift effect, where if you make you know say something bad about Taylor, you know the, the fans will come after you. But on this one, if you support the wrong, you support the wrong rapper. It's like say oh, who shit. it is, and if it's polarizing, I'll take it out. Uh, I'd rather not. <laughs> I'm gonna play it safe. <laughs> smart man, smart smarty pants. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to have to check in. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, there goes your answer. Uh, <laughs> nope. There's that. Oh, nah, nah, Interesting. Nah, nah, nah. It's in Papao. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get my soda. What do you got for this fine gentleman, sir? Did he grow big, up? Big shout out to that lawyer. I might, might have to. <laughs> Rosenberg. <laughs> Rosenberg. <laughs> did he grow up watching any uh, wrestling? That's all I did. I was either going to be a comedian or a wrestler. Mm. Did you say your prayers and eat your vitamins, brother? Man, I remember I, I... Have you met Hulk Hogan? Yes, I have. Wow. I've been a couple times. I almost ran Hulk Hogan That's over with a why? golf cart. That's right. I, I almost would've. ran him over with you a should've. golf cart. It was an accident, though. We were, I was at WrestleMania one year, and they had me backstage doing uh, interviews with wrestlers. I was picking wrestlers up in a golf cart, and the whole gimmick was I was interviewing while I was driving them from one side <laughs> of the uh, stadium to the other. And so it was quick little... It was cool. It was like, like two-minute interviews. And so I just had a bunch of different wrestlers, and I was uh, driving through the hallway, and Hulk Hogan was doing an interview, and he was there with Jimmy Hart, and they had a camera guy. That's I, just, right. I stopped, and then Hulk Hogan turns and looks at me, and he's like, really, brother? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> he came over to me, and he got in my face. And, and, but he was super nice, though. He came over and gave me. It was, it was really cool. But as a kid, I remember I, I, uh, after I saw Hulk Hogan, I went and I grabbed my mom's jewelry and I found a, a gold cross and I remember I put it on <laughs> and, I, and I, I, I tore my shirt. I cut my shirt and I tore my shirt. You know, come on, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> was, I think anyone of a certain age and up has ripped off their shirt. Ripped off Hulk the Hogan. shirt, Man, yeah, But I had, I had my, my gold chain with the, with the cross on it and I, I do the impressions in the mirror. Who's was, your favorite wrestler? Of all time? You know what? No, can we get a top five? Ooh, ooh, this is a lot not, easier. Not than in order. Number one. Not in order. Just uh, up. Well, my favorite wrestler of all time. Okay, then this will be number one. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. Top five wrestlers. Ooh, let's see. Uh, Rey Mysterio's in there. Rey mm. Mysterio. Uh, Bret Hart. That's right. Uh, of course, Stone Cold. Okay. Valid. Hulk Hogan. For I sure. That's four. That's three. Mysterio. Oh, no, you're right. Four. And Ric Flair. Mm. Who's number one? Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm not mad at it. I like it. No John Cena or Undertaker? What? Uh, they, it, definitely in the top 10, along you. with Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho is one of the most, like, dude, he's, he's so amazing. No he's Chris had Benoit? A of, he's had a lot of waves. Chris, damn, you're You wild. know what? And, and this goes back to the whole thing <laughs> with, with, with people that were great at what they did. For horsemen. They made some, some bad choices mm. in life. But, but <sighs> Chris Benoit was, was, I saw him, perf- you know, wrestle a few times. That's dope. And his matches were badass mm. he's a bad dude uh, it, it, he was uh but you know ultimately you know you, you saw how the life choices and uh, that's unfortunate but what he did in the ring was incredible mm. i want to know who's number two i just gotta know uh for me probably uh rick flair okay i'm not mad at it stone cold over rick flair is respectable yeah and and for me being able to spend time with 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 steve uh, oh, you kicked it with Steve Austin. We're on, we're on a first name basis. Yeah, wow. no, I've, 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 been to his, I've been to his house a, a couple times. I don't like out. that. He's had me on, on multiple shows. I need to come we, hang out. You know, so we've we both hung out. Well, you know, we, he loves Mexican food. He loves carne asada. That's a, one of his favorite things. Like, give me a carne, a carne asada. You know, he's, <laughs> is, is he, he loves it. Is he like that in real life? Yes. Like his character? Yes, he's just, so, he's, yeah, dude, that's him. Uh. That is him. He's from, you know, he's from Texas. And and that's actually how he talks. That's what I tell people. I go, you know, a lot of times with the wrestlers, there's a character. It's a little, yeah. You know, there's, it's a character. But him, it's, I think the reason why um, his character was so successful was because it's it's him. Did you ever meet Scott Hall? Yes, Scott was so Razor, nice. Razor, Ramon, Scott Chico. was so freaking nice. And that's it's amazing. sad that um, I'd gotten a message from DDP uh, the night 
the night before and they were they you know they were already saying that it doesn't look like it's gonna you know so i i i unfortunately found out before the public did uh i i got a chance to uh to hang out with them and and shoot the shit he he came out to a couple of my shows and uh, uh scott hall ddp jake the snake they all uh lived together for a little bit <laughs> and um super nice guy I, I thought it was a great great gimmick that he had and for like uh, the razor ramon or the, the scott the hall ra- shit well razor ramon <clears throat> clearly scott hall and in, in, in his whole career was was incredible but for for latinos the razor ramon when, when shit was amazing on, when he took on that persona of razor ramon fire that was the coolest character like oh my god because you know back in the day we had tito santana Uzo don't get me wrong, tito santana was awesome but machismo forget it man the chains and oh yeah oh yeah chico and then <laughs> the flicking the flicking the toothpick and it's funny because uh, Scott always had a toothpick he even actually did he always had a toothpick That's so every time we'd hang out he'd always have it and he'd always you know he was always playing with the toothpick and you know he's doing tricks with it and you you can't help you were always watching him <laughs> do the little tricks and he'd flip it inside you know go backwards with it but he was so nice he was so freaking nice and really smart and he he gave a lot of great ideas to other wrestlers. So it wasn't like he was selfish. He was responsible for, for helping other characters develop, which I thought was pretty cool. That's amazing. What was one of your favorite matches? Oh, with his? Oh, uh, just, can, just in general. Uh, favorite matches. I got a chance to attend WrestleMania 25, and my favorite match was Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels. Oh. That was one of the baddest matches. I've was that a cage ever. match? No. no. It was regular. It was a regular match, but it was so good, and they went back and forth. And and it was like it's over. No, it's not. Oh, he kicked out. He kicked out. The other like they just kept going back and forth, and it's just like. Argh! And an old friend of mine, uh, Marty Elias, was the uh, referee, and Sick. so I thought that was really cool. He got to, you know, I told him, I go, hey, dude, you got to referee the baddest match of all time. Isn't Marty like one of the main referees for he, WWF he was, he was, or he WWE? Was, he was uh, one of the main guys for uh, uh, WWE for a long time, and then I think he uh, he also started working with uh, Lucha Underground. Oh, sick! So he was over there. That's but right. yeah, no, I do the love wrestling. If As a matter of fact, I um, a lot of the things that are in wrestling, I apply to my show. You know, the fact that you know, just the way that they dress, the way the entrance, the music, the merchandising, the marketing. Vince McMahon knows not that pendejo, man. Mm, you know, that's the I, man. I, I, like that's the dude right there. Have you met Vince McMahon? Never met him, and I'd be. I, I really, wanna, I want to meet him. Him and Gene Simmons, I feel like two guys are that are really great at honing their product and and putting it out there but, i find it but so vince strange so. that you never met vince mcmahon i think he's not the easiest person to meet i don't know I, I, and i'm not saying that like as far as his personality even though i no, no, no. a little bit but getting to him is you know i've met almost every wrestler i wanted to meet except him it, I, i've seen him many times in passing I, I almost ran him over too with the golf cart that's right he was there that day <laughs> What were you gonna say, buddy? Oh, if they came at you and wanted uh, wanted you to do something like how they did with Logan Paul or Bad Bunny, would you be open to it? I was really close this year. WrestleMania was in L.A. and actually, I was part of the uh, WrestleMania launch when they put the tickets on sale. So they um, they had um, Snoop, myself, and uh, God, who was it? It was a bunch of um, a bunch of the, the the roster that was there that day at SoFi, and we did a whole thing to. You know, put the tickets on sale. And then once WrestleMania happened at SoFi, I was behind the scenes and I got a chance to do interviews and, and pop around. You wouldn't wrestle on stage? Uh, the conversation was there about getting me in the ring, bro. But you know what? I'm I'm 47, not 27. <laughs> and shit, I fell out of bed the other day and I'm like, there's no way I would have taken a bump in that ring. <laughs> yeah, me leaving the ground is not an option anymore. And I think that I, I could be a manager outside. I could cause some, I could hit somebody with a chair. <laughs> You know, (laughs) but getting put through a table doesn't seem ideal. No, 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 no. That'd be amazing. It it would be amazing. I visualized it. It's amazing. But yeah, (laughs) on paper, it sounds good. But but I I couldn't do it. Mm. I couldn't do it, man. I know where I'm at. Uh, I know. Is there anything we haven't asked you that we should have asked you? No. Hey, man, this has been a lot of fun. I I love the fact that you guys have actually allowed me to talk. I, I got in that rant earlier and I was like, okay. Do your thing. I appreciate that. I read the comments. It's been really cool. I don't want anyone to say I'm the guy that cuts off the freaking interview, uh, the the guest. Right? <laughs> if you had any advice for any young comedians coming up, still trying to make it? The There's an issue where I feel like the advice that I would give is not based on the now. Um, you know, when I first started, that we didn't have all the resources. So I say, you know, 
making excuses for why you're not doing what you want to do. It's like, come on, there's so much out there. Uh, I would have killed in the beginning to have had a, a YouTube or social media as a place to put my stuff up, you know, <laughs> out there because in the beginning you had to rely on, can you get on the Tonight Show? Can you get your own special? Can you get on? There was only a few things, like the goals for a comic back in 1997 were Tonight Show, get an HBO special, and then hopefully you can go on the road and sell tickets and be a working comedian. Whereas now you don't need anybody. You don't need an HBO or Showtime or even a Netflix. It's nice. Big shout out to Netflix. Thanks for all the checks. Uh -huh. They took really good care of me. But uh, now you can put your stuff out there. You can edit all the, you can, everything that's in your palm with your phone, you can download things to create your content and put it out there. So there's no reason why you shouldn't put it out there. So if anything I say, you are in control of your own destiny. Don't rely on others to give you that opportunity. Create your own opportunity and stop making excuses. That's right. Before we go, I got to ask, do you got any beef with any comedians? Not even worth talking about. That's ah, right. Not even worth talking about. Hello. No clout. I got shows to do and money to make. And uh, yeah. Let's talk about the tour. Get rich or die fluffy. No, I'm just Get kidding. Rich. You like that one? That was pretty good. I'm going to need 10%. Yeah. Um, what's, the, uh, what's the actual name of the tour? And Don't worry, be fluffy. That's right. Don't worry, be fluffy. And we are going anywhere and everywhere. So uh, a whole U.S. tour is planned. And we're going to Europe, Australia, uh, Middle East. It's Yeah, we're, we're going anywhere and everywhere. That's amazing. Um, and, and, and that's another thing, too. Uh, you talked about advice. Don't just be so focused on and concerned about claiming uh, a certain area if you're focused on claiming and being part of a certain area that's where you're missing out you know think bigger than that don't be the big kid on the block be the kid that takes over the whole city the whole state the whole country if you're just focusing on this right here this is my corner that's all right go ahead enjoy i, I you know focus on growing <clears throat> OK, once once you once you lay claim to one specific thing, I feel like you hold yourself to that Absolutely. and you keep yourself from growing. You know, and some people say, oh, well, you know, you want to keep it real. Sometimes keeping it real doesn't work out. You need, you need to grow. You need to, you know, get get outside of what you know, get uncomfortable. Being uncomfortable is actually a really good thing, because if you're uncomfortable, you're experiencing new things and you're learning and you're expanding. And this applies to whatever it is that you do. You know, uh, don't just limit yourself. Grow. And if, if you're comfortable, you're not growing. If you're comfortable, you're not growing. That's right. If that's, as far, if that's as far as you want to go, then good for you. But if you want to think big, then you got to grow. And gotta get un you got to get uncomfortable. Just like right now, I'm wearing pants. I'm not comfortable. They're not skinny I jeans. I wear shorts. No, they're not. <laughs> but I got a niche and I can't reach it right now. <laughs> <laughs> So if you guys want to find Fluffy at any one of these states that he's visiting and see the schedule, the link is in the description. Before we go, though, I don't I don't think I've ever heard anyone ask you, what type of encounters do you have with, like, groupies? Oh, you know, I've been doing this now for 27 years, and I've had some fans. I've had some fans, and, and I'm, you know, like, uh, I'm not putting anybody's business out there, but, you know, I... I Every relationship I've ever had is somebody that I met at a show. Well, well, well. And at your age these days, how does it go? Pretty good? You know what, bro? I choose peace. I choose peace. I, I don't want to argue. I don't want to fight. I don't want to feel like I'm uh, limited to happiness because I have to ask permission to go outside or, or do whatever. <laughs> I don't want to be in a relationship no more. I'm, 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 I'm okay. And uh, I don't, I got, tengo mis perros, man. My dogs don't stress me out. They want food and so do I, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's, it's, you know, to, ask, to answer your question, every, every relationship I've ever had is somebody that I met at, at a show. Well, if you're ever tired after a show and you need any extra help, here's a gift from me to you, my friend. Oh, shoot. This is royalty honey. Have you heard of the honey packs? I have never. Oh, for him and her. I can only imagine what's in this box. No, no, no. It's just honey. They're honey packs. So if you ever want to make an amazing first impression on one of those fine gals at your show that somehow make it back to wherever. I like it. It's almost like a box of cigars. <laughs> just knock down a honey pack. Thank me later. Okay. All right. Shout out to our sponsor, Royalty Honey. Royalty Honey. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Knowing me, I'm going to put this in tea. <laughs> I've seen people un, put it on chicken. Yeah. I've seen someone put it on taco. I mean, I don't understand honey on taco, but. That's different. I don't hate it, but it's different. So there's that. Okay. Shout out to the homies from Royalty Honey. For him and her? I mean, yeah. Definitely for you. All right. Well, that, thank you. That's what it is. So shout out to all of our sponsors. Nick Rosenberg, Royalty Honey. We have Tacos El Don in the building. We got Fluffy, the funniest fool. We've had the first fool. That's Noel G. You, you familiar with Noel, oh, Noel I know G? Noel, yeah. Yeah, so he's the first fool. You know. He, he was your first guest? No, he was the first fool. The first fool. Like, mm. a fool. You're the funniest fool. Thank you. Cheech is the original fool. OG fool. Yeah. It's catching on. That's the wizard of fools. <laughs> and I'm the top got, fool. Got the bougie guy outside. He's the foo foo. <laughs> that was fire. The guy, oh. the, the, guy, the guy outside in the alley who smells, he's the foo chi. <laughs> no? okay. That was good. I, I'll just stop. I I'll, I'll it. Stop. <laughs> what were you going to say, buddy? I just want to give you guys a chance. If you guys got a question, you want to ask them? Are there any questions the live audience has? Any questions, TK? At this stage in his career, what still inspires him? Knowing that there's still more first. There's still more first. There's still things that, that haven't been done yet that I think that I think I can I can break uh you know, break the ceiling on that. You wanna name one? Uh I think uh I think a football stadium is in order. I think I think I SoFi? You know what? I think we've already made a big statement here in LA. I'm it, not mad it at it. Might, it might be time to get uncomfortable. I like it. Any other questions? That cr that question was from Sour Apple, Chris himself. My son, Marlon. Favorite moment in the Marvel movies? I'm Iron Man. <laughs> the snap that changed everything. That's Man, tough. I got all choked up too. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's tight. Yeah, no, for sure. Bernardo, any questions for the legend? Questions for young, young entrepreneurs. Yes. You know what? Um, bet on yourself. And, and the less you can, um, the less people you have to, uh, the less people you involve in your business, the more control you will have over your business. Facts. Okay. Uh, it, it, once you start getting too many hands in there, you, you, you got to listen. And because and, people will, will say, hey, well, I'm, I'm, I'm investing. You got to listen. You got to listen. And then little by little, you lose control. And once you have something that's really, really good, you dilute it by involving more people. Now, if you are going to involve people in your business, you need to make sure you involve the right people, people that are going to help you get better, help you grow. If you're trying to say, hey, you know, I got this business and you're trying to bring in homies or people that aren't that don't share your vision and your passion. Keep people who don't share your vision and passion as far away from your business. Involve people that are bigger than you and that see something that you don't see and, and want to, to, to grow you. Yeah. It's a righteous advice. That's right. I'm, I'm guilty of bringing in the wrong people. Oh, so are I we. still do it. I still do it. And it sucks. Yeah. I but, feel it. Eh. But yeah. Going once, going twice. That's it, folks. Carlos, Sana. Hola. Spooks. There's that. Did Go. you want me to sign your Funko? <laughs> That's after. That's after. <laughs> Don't worry, we found a, a deck on shit. Shout out to TK, she and, came through. And a big shout out to the Tapatio family. Uh, thank you for uh, for the trust. That's, uh, that's seriously that was huge, uh, allowing me that honor. That's amazing. That's a huge honor, and it still it means it means the world that they trust me to to be able to represent their product and their family because it is a family business. Absolutely. And all amazing people over there. Uh, but yeah, and thank you guys. Thank you. Pleasure, ours. We highly appreciate you. My name is LA Icon. We have the legendary funniest fool, Gabriel Iglesias here, Fluffy. Yes. We have the wizard of fools, Rich Homie Juan behind. We got Sour Apple. We got TK. We got Tacos El Don. Tacos El Don. And we here, Baby Food Community Podcast. Thank you for watching, and we're out. Peace, fool.